It is game day, E, folks, and the story that has been owning the Michigan football world for the past 48 hours plus now this is day three of the Daxon Hill tracker flight tracker season now is upon us. We've kind of dove into the uh, the aviation records and made a couple phone calls, and we might have locked in on what flight Dax Hill is taking to Miami. So we'll let you know all of that coming up here in a second. But want to make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. We're coming up on 19,000 subscribers, folks. We need 150 new folks from this video. We've been getting about seven, 8,000 new people watching the last two videos on Dax Hill. So uh, a lot of you have subscribed. So if you want Michigan to win, we need 150 new subscribers from this video. Scroll below, hit that subscribe button. 150 is our number. And I've been told guaranteed that Michigan wins. They beat Georgia tomorrow. 150 equals a guaranteed Michigan win. Probably no uh, money back guaranteed on that from me at least. All right. We're going to talk Jackson Hill. We're going to talk some Michigan football uniforms and the radio broadcast is getting a little shake up. Heading into this one coming up right now. I am your host, James Yoder. It is Orange Bowl Eve. It is maybe the biggest game in Michigan football history. I know it's the semifinal, but Michigan's never been here before, and uh, they haven't played for the national championship since 1997. Some would argue 2016 Ohio State or the one versus two. Uh, 2006 game were arguably bigger because those in some ways served as college football playoff semifinals in, in, in one way or another. Obviously, 2016, they still had to play uh conference championship and the actual CFP semifinals. But let's jump into the story everyone wants to know. Daxton Hill, um, we told you yesterday, he was trying to get his second negative test, COVID test after a close contact, but I have not confirmed whether or not he ever contacted positive, you know, tested positive himself, but um, did not fly out on Wednesday. And Jim Harbaugh was asked this morning, he said, hey, Dax isn't here. Uh, we're calling him, you know, it's probable. It's, uh, he's, he's, you know, going to see if he plays or not. He is still potentially could make it down here to Florida. But it is now flight tracker season, and there's a lot of speculation, a lot of rumors, but I'm a pretty good internet researcher, and I dove in full uh, full uh, bore with this one, and I think I've got a pretty good read on what I believe could, you know, very strongly could be Daxton Hill's flight to Miami. So let's kind of take a look at the source here is uh, looked at all the private flights out of Willow Run Airport in Ypsilanti today, any of them going to South Florida, going anywhere near there. And we found one. And then I looked into who the owner was. It was an LLC. I did an LLC search on the owner. And it just so happens to be a guy named Jeffrey Capro and his son. They've got an LLC that they are the uh, you know, president and secretary for. Obviously, people do this for uh, privacy protection. He is the president and owner of Victory Automotive Group. If you live in the Midwest, you've probably heard of Victory automotive they've got tons of dealership including in the state of michigan and he is a big michigan donor but i went and i talked to the thing made a little call to their corporate headquarters tried to get him on the phone ask many people there oh no they're down in florida already confirmed that the family took a flight or at least some of the family uh he's got a few sons took a flight on december 26th the day after christmas on sunday so this isn't the family coming down to see the game and before we go to this yeah go ahead and go to this picture jimmy here's the flight right i took this right before we filmed this uh about 2:45 or so in the afternoon on uh, 2 45 eastern in the afternoon on thursday that is the flight but right now you know 15 minutes after i took the screenshot 30 minutes or so uh it is about to land a in miami at a private airport right outside of uh, the main Miami Airport's got 20 minutes to go. It should land at about uh, 2.55 or so Eastern time, right? A couple other things, right? How do we doubly, triply, quadruply confirm the source that, oh, the family went down? Okay, let's go back. I'm going to go uh, keep it on here, Jeremy, or feel free to uh, go to that next one if you want while I look down and give you guys some, uh, some records. This uh, same flight with the family, six passengers, a 1.28 p.m. on Sunday the 26th, landed down in Florida uh, later on that day. And since then, it's taken multiple flights from, where is this one? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, went to Houston, Texas first. Then they went to Clearwater. I'm not sure why they went to Houston. Interesting. I don't know. Harbaugh to the Texans? Maybe? No, I'm just kidding there. Um, and they've taken multiple flights back and forth between Clearwater and Naples. So my guess from there is like, hey, we're going to Houston for a reason. And then there's been two flights back and forth from uh, South Florida to Naples, also in Florida. In the last couple days, the, the, the plane went up to Michigan 
uh, yesterday, uh, 1.30 in the afternoon, sat there for about 24 hours, and then took off at 12.15 this afternoon, a little over two and a half hour flight from Michigan Ypsilanti Willow Run Airport, 15 minute drive from Michigan Stadium down to a, uh, a uh, airport within a moment's drive from uh, you know the stadium that they're going to play the game in tomorrow night down in Miami. So I think I'm you know pretty detective, right? Michigan, huge booster, the athletic department and provost and regents and boosters and the school president have used this plan in the past for for uh for um, school use in, in there and then it's going down there and then we've confirmed the family's not on the flight so if dax hill is taking a private jet which i would think they would have him do and not put him on a commercial flight and you know just get covered when he's trying to have been avoided for the last seven six, seven eight days i think this is the only likely flight he could be on uh, unless they're going to fly him tomorrow on game day, which I think would be a pretty weird occurrence. I think if he doesn't make this flight today, if he's not landing in Miami by the time you guys are watching this, um, folks, I don't know if Dax Hill is going to be playing in the game tomorrow. But if you guys want him to play, here is the ask from you. If you want him to like the video, play, you got to like this video. We've been doing it for Michigan getting the wins, and tons of you guys uh, like the video. I think we had over 1,000 likes last time I checked on yesterday's video, so you know we're going to beat Georgia. But now we got to do it for Dax Hill. Don't jinx it. It's like this shirt. I've worn this shirt on the day before games on every single Michigan win so far this year, uh, starting in like week four. So uh, that's why I'm wearing it today. Not jinxing it here. Don't jinx it there. And I got rid of the facial hair. Mustache is back in play only. It kind of was looking like I just had a little full scruff going on. Nope, I'm mustache back because Michigan is undefeated since I started rocking the mustache uh, after the Michigan State game. Our presenting sponsor is BetUS. We're going to have more on this situation and others down in Miami here in a moment. But BetUS is our sportsbook partner. If you use that promo code chatsports.com slash go blue, Jeremy, make sure we're pulling up that jersey deal. Um, you can get going with a BetUS 125% bonus. All the big time betters seem to be putting money on Michigan, that seven and a half point spread. It's kind of a preposterous spread. I'm thinking about putting a lot of money on Michigan to win the money line at like plus 250, plus 275. I put in 100, uh, get you know my 100 back plus another $275 in winnings. If you use that link though and the promo code, screenshot it, write it down, take a picture. Don't just search BetUS on your browser, but you gotta you know track to that link. It'll redirect you to BetUS. You then qualify, we'll get a list. Your name and your, or your account number will be on it. Jersey at chatsports.com to redeem we'll send you an authentic michigan jordan brand jersey so if you want to put some money on college football bowl games put some money on michigan nfl all sports calendar long we do at bet us and we're giving you the best deal in the game gotta use that link though chatsports.com slash go blue use the promo go go blue and then email us jersey at chatsports.com you see that georgia is still uh with about uh, what are we, 27 or so 28 hours until game time Georgia is still a seven and a half point favorite. It has not changed in the past three or four days. It popped to eight and a half a week ago. Now it's been settling back about seven and a half ever since then. Over-unders continues to go up. I think it's about a point and a half over what it was initially at 45 and a half points. So the last word on this Daxon Hill, before we talk a little uniform and talk Michigan, uh, the broadcast, some interesting uh, nuggets there, is we should probably know tonight, right? You may even know there might be a word that comes out before this video. It takes us time to put a video together to get these graphics, et cetera, et cetera. So if by the time you watch this, we already know about Dax Hill, hey, you know, we're filming this at uh, you know 2.30 or so Eastern. Uh, hopefully have it done filmed by 2.45. So, you know. Things take time. I'm not going live on uh, on Periscope or anything like that. So we should know tonight. If you don't hear anything tonight, if you haven't seen it from me on this YouTube channel, I'll put it on the community or the comments, my Twitter account, or something from Michigan officially or a beat writer. I don't think that means that means Dax Hill is not coming and didn't make the trip because there will be uh, cell phones everywhere trying to capture a picture of him. Let's talk uniforms, folks. Uh, these are some sweet uh, edits, and there is about 50 or 60 more that, uh, that are out there on Twitter. And these are probably the five most likely I think Michigan will wear tomorrow. Um, I'm guessing that number one is going to be the pick, right? That's the, that's the one they wore against Washington. It's the ones they wore against uh, Ohio State. Those seem to be kind of the winning formula uh, in the big games, at least the home games, and Michigan is the home team in this game. Number two is interesting. So go down in the comments. Let me know which one. Not the one you like. Not the one you favorite. You hope they wear one day. The one you think you're predicting Michigan will win in tomorrow's game against Georgia. Type one for the all blues. Type two for those all blues with the maize sleeve. Uh, there's a lot of you know people teasing out there that Michigan could have worn that for Ohio State or even the Big Ten Championship game. Uh, all Mays right there with the May sleeves they wore back in 2017 
against Florida, or the traditionals, but you add the, the cooler. I really those May sleeves, which I don't know if they've worn. Uh, yeah, maybe I missed one, but I don't know if they've worn, but they really add, make, make a nice addition to, uh, to these uniforms on two, three, and four there. So the traditional uniforms with May sleeves, or the flip-flops, the inverse, that a lot of people have been saying, hey, why don't we wear one, those one of these times? Michigan wearing the maize jerseys, potentially, and blue pants. That's the one I think is least likely for Michigan to wear. But I do want to give credit where credit's due because we used a photo of this guy early in the uh, season. I didn't know who it was from. I saw it passed around a Facebook page or something like that. Uh, sa uh, I almost said skanky. Swanky Wolverine. Um, you know, pretty cool Twitter account. He puts out a ton of edits, uh, edits videos, edits photos. It's very pro-Michigan. And he came up with like 50 or 100 uh, uniform combos in a GIF. And he was supposed to like press on it. And, uh, and oh, hey, this is the one I got when I pressed on it. Um, and so I grabbed the five that I thought were most likely for Michigan to win. Go ahead and give him a follow if you like, uh, you know, stuff like that and, uh, and all the stuff he has going on at Swanky Wolverine. Crediting for those photos like a responsible YouTuber. Uh, let's stick to all blue. Um, that's the winning formula. Uh, it seems like the team really likes that one. They warm against Ohio State. I do think adding the May sleeves would just kind of pop off the screen. Georgia's wearing their all whites. Michigan wearing those all blues with the uh, the May sleeves would be a cool combo to uh, you know show the world that uh, Michigan football is the Georgia of the next generation, but maybe with better football has uh, the best uniform combos in all of college football right now. Dan Deardorff is not going to be on Michigan's radio broadcast tomorrow night. Uh, it's not COVID-related, according to uh, the tweet that him and then Jim Brandsetter, his, his broadcasting partner, put out. Um, it's not going to be his last broadcast because Michigan's going to win this game and play uh, against Alabama or Cincinnati. But if Michigan were to lose, which they won't, which they won't, uh, Dan Deardorff would unfortunately miss his last broadcast. If you didn't see earlier in the season, uh, Dan Deardorff and Jim Brandstetter, who have been on Michigan calls in various forms uh, for decades, are both retiring at the end of the season. They got to see Ohio State, uh, Michigan beat Ohio State, and a Big Ten championship as potentially their last uh, calls together. Uh, and so what a way to go out for those two. So John Jansen, who has been rumored to be one of the people taking over in that color analyst role uh, you know, permanently on a permanent basis going forward, has filled in at times throughout the last few years on those radio broadcasts, does the halftime show, does the postgame show. Uh, he will be on as the color man with Jim Brandsetter, potentially giving you a look into what you know he will uh, have going forward uh, after this season. The Michigan radio broadcast with those two guys, Brandstetter and, uh, and uh, John Jansen, and then Doug Karsh down the sideline kind of give you an insight into what's going on with Michigan, may do a, a halftime interview with coaches, et cetera, then does all the post game. You can listen to that if you don't have you know, the ability to listen around radio and you don't want to listen to Herb Street and Fowler. ESPN News, you can go to that channel. It's going to be broadcasting the game with the Michigan Home Radio Broadcast, or you can go to the ESPN app. If you've got the ESPN app, delete it as soon as the game's over. We're not trying to give them any uh, free downloads or anything like that, but I might check that out. I don't think those guys have been very – I think they've kind of lost a step, uh, you know, to be frank with you guys, but maybe uh, give it a glance to see what Jansen has could be a cool way to listen. The Orange Bowl, number two, Michigan. They should be number one. Who said that? Uh, versus number three, Georgia. Georgia is the favorite. All right, seven and a half points. Uh, it's 45 and a half over under. 7.30 is the kickoff. I hope that's the real kickoff. I hope it's not one of these things where, you know, we've got a, they put 7.30 so you tune in, then you've got a 30 minute half, you know, a uh, uh, 30 minute show. But it's going to be right after the Alabama Cincinnati game, which is the one I am going to uh, from. Family reasons, uh, most notably, my wife uh, works for a company that's uh, one of the name sponsors of all these bowls, and she has a suite and some pretty uh, badass tickets, and it's kind of giving me the uh, the wink and the gun and the, the nudge in the, uh, in the ribs that I've got to go with her to that tomorrow and, and host clients, et cetera, et cetera. So that is the word. You see the offense. You see the defense stats for the squads. Georgia, the number two. Uh, defense in all of college football, and they have been phenomenal both against the run and the pass, and hell, even phenomenal against scoring. So go ahead, let me know below, predict the score, Michigan, Georgia. I put my score prediction out there a few times uh, this week and maybe last week. Uh, my prediction is Michigan is going to win this one 30 to 17. I think they've got the momentum. I think they've got the right game plan on offense and defense. And uh, before we go, I do want to. I had the stats sitting here. I wanted to uh, mention a couple minutes ago, but think about this: Hassan Haskins had five rushing touchdowns alone in the Ohio State game. I think Michigan had what four or five rushing touchdowns against Iowa in the Big Ten championship game. Um, Georgia has only given up three rushing touchdowns all season. That's pretty amazing, right? 
all season, 13 games, only three uh, rushing touchdowns. Another stat here, I'll read over here on the big screen. Uh, they've only allowed three rushes of 20 or more yards this season, which is by far and away uh, the, the biggest nationally. And no team this entire season has finished a game averaging 4.4 yards or higher against this Georgia defense. They certainly, um, you know, bring it on the defense. And then uh, to the three rushing touchdowns and uh, this is a crazy one. All in, every rush this season, Georgia's only giving up 2.61 yards per carry across the entire season. Um, and Florida, the only team all year at 161 yards, is the only team that got over 130 against them. So Michigan, if they can execute against this Georgia defense from a running perspective, it'll open up things on the you know, reverses and everything that Michigan does in the passing game. And I think that'll give them to uh, 30 points, which I think is what they're going to need to uh, win this game. I said at the top of the show, 150 new subscribers equals a Michigan win. Guaranteed, probably. Um, but don't jinx it, right? So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Send it to a friend, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. We asked you for your feedback. We asked you guys how likely you would be to recommend this show to a friend. Had some detractors and some good feedback on how we can improve, but I would say it was 80, 90%. Gave us nine and 10, uh, the highest scores you can get for what's called net promoter score. So go ahead, now's the time. Uh, recommend us to a friend, send them that link and uh, make sure they subscribe so we can give the, the good vibes out there in the world. Good vibes, beat Georgia, beat Georgia. Give me a call there, Chugs. Be Georgia, be Georgia, be Georgia. Call! All right. We're back. I'll put a pregame show tomorrow, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 noon, something like that. Until then, folks, go blue.